And I'm part of the Harvard Medical School where there's 9,000 professors and doctors working on cures for diseases. Now, the major cause of disease and disability in the world is the process of aging. We tend to only treat the, the very end symptoms. We call them heart disease and Alzheimer's, but this is truly aging. The way I see it, we're just doing the same as every other researcher uh, at the Harvard Medical School, trying to make lives healthier and longer. That aging is simply a, a loss of information. Um, if I would start with an analogy, I would say it's similar to a uh, DVD. The idea is that you would get scratches on that DVD and uh, so the, the, the cell, uh, by this analogy, the reader of that information skips over songs and doesn't play the movie very well. The point is that, that these scratches uh, would lead to misinformation over time and cells lose their identity. So that the, the epigenome when we're young tells us a skin cell to stay a skin cell and a brain cell to stay a brain cell, a nerve cell. But over time, we, these cells lose their ability to read the genome correctly. And if this is true, it's very good news because it means that we could reboot the system. So if our cells are like a computer, we may be able to reboot and reinstall new software if it becomes corrupted. In our study, we're showing that it's possible to reboot the eye and we can make blind mice see again. So it's a particularly exciting time for aging research. It's definitely a stressor. Uh, I don't enjoy being... We're pretty certain as longevity researchers that one of the main reasons that fasting, and for that matter, exercise, is good for you is that it's turning on longevity genes. And the set of longevity genes that I work on, they're called sirtuins. They all play protective roles. And at least three of those are involved in the emergency response team uh, on the DNA. Now, you can do two things to slow and reverse aging. One is creating artificial damage. You can tell the cell to get ready for an emergency without actually having an emergency. And that process is called hormesis. Uh, another way to think of hormesis is what doesn't kill you or harm you makes you stronger. So exercise is, is a form of hormesis. Being hungry is a form of hormesis. And what that does is it upregulates these defenses of the body, including the sirtuin uh, genes. Now, the other way to do it, reset the epigenome and in other words, polish off those scratches off the DVD. And that's the new work. That's where my lab is really heading now. It is, we used to think that our DNA was destiny. But what we know from studies of twins, identical twins, is that only 20% of your health in old age, your health span as we call it, uh, is genetically determined. 80% is in our own hands. And that's because the epigenome is malleable. We can't change our genetics unless you go back in time and choose your parents, but you can choose your epigenome. It's, it does change, because what we now know is that you can change the arc of your life by doing the right thing. So there are a number of theories. I'll, I'll give you some ideas. Uh, one theory is that the, the sugars that stick to proteins, uh, glycosylation, we know those change with aging. We know that the various sugars change on antibodies on the surface of immune cells, and they even change on the surface of the virus. And that could be one major problem. The other problem with the elderly person's immune system is that they become clonal. And what I mean by that is that a young person has, you know, tens of thousands of different possibilities in their immune system, whereas older people, they eventually, their immune systems start to just amplify up to certain types. Um, and certain cell types dominate in older people versus younger people. And also what, what we're seeing is the severe cases versus the, the mild cases, the severe cases are clearly unable to dampen the viral load. So the virus is able to amplify. Um, and so it's not just simply that the, there's an over inflammation, which is certainly part of the end stage of the disease for many older patients, but also the ability to target and kill the cells that contain the virus before it's able to amplify up within the cells. But exactly why that isn't, uh, isn't known. I mean, I think it's really what I've been really excited by is, you know, this is one company out of hundreds around the world that have stopped what they're doing to turn their arsenal against this uh, enemy that we face. And it's uh, unprecedented. Think about this in the history of humanity. In fact, in the history of all life on earth, 
there's never been a species that's turned its whole attention against one enemy. And we're witnessing this right now. And all of us scientists are putting our brain power towards solving this problem.